Hello, good afternoon, and welcome back to the Drofus Demonar series. My name is Chris Rizel, and I'm joined today by my colleague Jasper Wong. Hi, everyone. So today's Demonar number eight is about customizing room data sheets. Historically, you could make minor amendments to our built in reports within the software. But if you want to do something more bespoke, you'd have to create a custom report. There's been lots of development over the past 12 months, so today there's lots more possibilities to customize our built in reports. And as a rough guide, we think that, you know, maybe now 90% of the customization requests can actually be handled using our new report features. And Jasper will give you a flavor of this shortly. Um, just before I hand over to Jasper, I wanted to share with you that this is actually the last in our current Deminar series. A lot of time and effort goes into these Deminars. Um, we've covered lots of great topics over the past, past months. And kudos to Jasper who does the lion's share, but our whole team are involved behind the scenes providing input on what to present, creating content, etc. Um, so we are thinking of starting a new Deminar series, but we are going to need your input. There's been close to 3000 views, which is, is pretty good considering, you know, we're not Joe Rogan. This is quite technical stuff, but there's only been 22 likes. I'm sure that more than 0.01% of our attendees or those watching on YouTube have learned something. So if you'd like us to do a new Deminar series, go back and give a thumbs up on YouTube to the sessions that you enjoyed. Get your colleagues involved too. And when we get over the lofty number of 100 likes, we'll start then to plan for the next Deminar series. And, and also, you know, more importantly, that input will give us an idea of the sort of topics that you're actually interested in, in hearing more about. So without further ado, I will hand over to Jasper. Thanks, Chris. All right. So with today's demo around the customizing of room data sheets, uh, the key takeaways are, you know, firstly to refresh ourselves with what is a room data sheet the information it contains and who benefits from using it. Then we will look, take a look at the new room details report and demonstrate a few new features as listed. So in this demo series, we've been delving into the room data sheet and the different functions of Dorofus that helps to aggregate and manage data from different stakeholder sources. The topics we've looked at ranges from getting information into Dorofus to setting up the fields using Dim GUI to collect information. And we'll just do a quick recap of what a room data sheet is. It contains many categories of information, general inf room information such as a room name, room number, to locate where it is on a project, briefing data, such as a target area and occupancy, and describing the purpose and usage of the room. It also includes stakeholders uh, specific requirements, such as the environmental conditions, HVAC and lighting, for example. It also contains details of building elements such as floors, walls, ceilings, and what goes into the rooms, your FFNE, engineering services, and many others. In short, it contains a snapshot of information about the room. Many stakeholders contribute to the development of information in a room data sheet. The planner, architect, engineers, and other members of the design team typically create and update this information. They also use the information in the room data sheet to inform their design. Other stakeholders that consume the data is the client. The room data sheet fast tracks the searching of information for the client to be able to provide feedback to the team. A PM or project manager is also interested as it provides a coordinated view of the information, which can help get client approval for any deviations from the project brief. 
A contractor uses the information during the construction phase for reference and cross-checking the individual room requirements are met. In other words, on many projects, room data sheet is supplying the eye in BIM. Now let's take a step back and look at reports at a generic level. The purposes of reports are to convey information to specific audience and present information in different formats. And there's always a visual or aesthetic component to reports. Reports in Drawfers comes in different shape and forms. There is out of the box templates, Excel exports, custom report for scheduling, or a sheet with QR codes to access information or item information. The purposes of reports is to extract and present specific information in a way that it's clear and easily understood and to be used by stakeholders involved in a projects for work in progress reviews or deliverables. Focusing into our topic today of customizing room data sheets. Up until recently, we have two styles of reporting templates. Out of the out of the box template where there are some flexibility with the report setup. Custom reports for specific presentation of information. These typically are designed to show specific attribute information and have their layout fixed, meaning any changes to a report requires some tweaks to using other software. From late 2022, we have introduced a new report server and with it several new customizable reports. And in particular, uh, for the room data sheet, we have the room details report. On the surface, it looks similar to the legacy reports. That's because the improvements are all under the hood. This new report will allow the end user to use any of the Drawfus project attributes in any of the sections of the report. It will do away in majority of the cases where you will previously use third party software to do the final configuration of your report. And it is this new report we'll be showing in our demo now today. The new improved out of the box uh, room details report has many functionality. These are some of the key ones. This template allows you to decide and use any attribute in a report, giving you more flexibility to customize the information for your project deliverables. The occurrence list can be configured with the information you need to show. You can also split the occurrence list to individual item list and manage the information separately for each item list. You can now use any attribute to filter and sort your reports. You can also use these attribute values, including composite tags for batch PDF naming. A project can be using many group statuses or classifications. We now have attribute sets that will display the values of these if they are used in a database. In the legacy reports, the PDF files were rasterized before being added to the generated PDF. The new reports append the PDF file to the report without changing your PDF files. A possible use case may be appending your room layout sheets to your room data sheets. And for the more technically inclined team members, you can do more formatting such as table borders, changing the text sizes, using the JSON uh, via our online report editor. Before jumping into the nuts and bolts, let's look at how the new report differs from the legacy. The end goal is to have a report with information laid out as close to the custom report as possible, shown in previous slides. For this demo, we have a legacy report on the left and the new report on the right. Firstly, the information in the description box is included into the gray property section. The fields in the categorization areas and group sections are updated to show key information for the project. The general room requirements tab is retained. And the headers of the occurrence list fields is updated to show more relevant information and the notes are now in a column of their own. 
So how do you tell if you're using the, the legacy report or the new reports? One way is the user interface of the report settings, which has been organized into three main sections. Starting off with the report filters to select the rooms you wish to include in the report. The next section is to set up the content you want to show in the report. And finally, the report options, such as a report name or the uh, paper size. We will now show you how to set up the new report. For this demo, we will have the report on the left to guide you through the different settings used. We will also be looking at the top half of the report. That's everything above the finishes uh, occur occurrence list for now. We have already saved a copy of the room details report and a part way through customizing the new report using the room DIPU.22. So to start off, we'll configure the uh, header. We'll leave that on, and there's no additional uh, attributes to be added. We will then add the acoustic considerations and description requirements to the property sections. Here you will see we can we are amending the labels so it appears shorter in the final report. For categorization, we will be removing the level name. And for the area, we will include the design area field and update the label name to include the word drawn. For groups, classification, and statuses, we will now use the new attribute sets, which will only display if the fields are being used in a project. For the room data field, we will show the general room requirement tab. So we have now set up the data part of what we want to see in the report. Next, we will look at the occurrence table. With the occurrence uh, list, you can use any fields to display the occurrence information. And for each attribute, you now have the option to rename the headers, create header groups, define the width of the columns using points as units, which is what we've done here. You can also define the width as a percentage of the page width. You can set aggregation as required and its alignments uh, within the column. You can, now, you, you can also split the occurrence to its individual item list. When you split the list, the order of the item list in the room data sheet will change. Individual item list allows further customization to the displayed information for each list. For this report, we will remove some attributes from the finish, service, and door list. There is also a filter function for each list, so you can further define the specific items that you want to include. And here is a room data sheet with the split occurrence list. The key thing to note here is each list has its own heading with its own information. This is another example for an item list. Note that we're using the percentage to define the column width, and also with the budget price, the report provides the total price at the end of the list. There may be situations where you need to have PDF documents or drawings appended to room data sheets. In this demo, we will show how you can display a list of appended documents in the room data sheet and append the room layout sheet that's stored in the office. For this room, there are two PDF documents. We only want to append the room layout sheet to the room data sheet. So the first thing to do is to set up the document information to be displayed in a room data sheet. We also filter to show only the room layout sheets using the document category. Next is to enable the merge PDF into report function. You also need to set up the filter so only the room layout sheet is added. Save your settings and generate the new 
the report. And this is the final room data sheet report with a room layout sheet appended as one document. For this to work on your projects, we have a function to bulk import PDF files such as room layout sheets, and that can be associated to the individual rooms within the office. So far, we have shown you the functionalities within a desktop client. For the more technically inclined users, there are more tinkering you can do using our RDL editor. This method will require some knowledge of JSON. Here we have two reports. The left is a report with split occurrence list. The right is the same report, but with further configurations carried out in the RDL editor. We will now highlight a few of these uh, improvements. The first is the occurrence list has been reorganized so fabric and finishes are before doors and ffe &E. Next, the headers to each item list has been relabeled for reader clarity. The last is the separator lines between each item to visually assist at a reader in viewing the information. Fonts and background colors can be changed to suit your corporate requirements as well. To access this RDL editor, head over to Dorofus Web, go to your profile and open reports. This is a list of all the new customizable out-of-the-box reports and its derivatives. Look for your report and activate the editor, which allows you to navigate to each section of the report and tinker with the settings. To finish off today's session, we're leaving you with a few tips when working with reports. Save as you go and duplicate reports before making big changes or for testing purposes. When you have made a change to the report settings, clear the report server cache so it takes on the, the latest settings. And set up your report early and use it to iron out any kinks before your deadlines. And if you still have a need for a bespoke design report, contact our customer success team who will be happy to help you out with your requirements. And we've come to the end of this demo now. Back to you, Chris. Thanks, Jesper, that was really great. Um, so we have modified the terminology that we use. We still have our legacy reports, um, custom out of the box reports where you customize what goes into the report and the format within our software. And finally, bespoke reports. If you want to create something from scratch using bespoke report editing software. A good analogy is if you're buying a car, it comes with a stereo system out of the factory. You can upgrade and customize the stereo system. Or if you're a real audio file, then you can install a bespoke aftermarket system. Jasper, just in case anybody joined late or they want to share this with their colleagues, how can they find the recording? So the recording of this session will be posted onto the Drufus YouTube channel and all the uh, demo videos that we have uh, recorded uh, has been put into a playlist. And when we've uploaded the this demo video, we will be sending out an uh, email notification. Great. So as I mentioned earlier, please take a look at the series on YouTube, like your favorite sessions, uh, share them with your colleagues, other parties, et cetera, that are working on your projects. And then if you have any ideas for future demo sessions that you'd like to see, please feel free to drop an email to support or, or directly to Jasper. Thanks again, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks, everyone.